Is that my cheeks? Jeez, I've gotten so chubby. I blame lockdown, but my girlfriend blames takeaways. So, you know, it's kind of a, I think mine's more accurate. Anyway, so I hope you like the new feel for these updates. I'm trying to be a little bit more personal so you can kind of see what it's like in my shoes, but I don't know if you're gonna like that, so. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually have quite a lot to do in this update. I'm going to try and get the whole conversation, the whole dialogue system done. Um, and I know that that kind of heavily relies on the questing system, so we may need to do that too. Hello, kitty. And also, I really want to finish our vendor system because I like to sell stuff. All right, so first things first, we're going to make sure that our Trello is up to date. Um, I actually decided to change the buffs a lot, so I'm actually going to move this card back into the to-do list and I'll have something cool to show you later on. So moving on to the vendor system, and with the vendors I'm actually quite lucky as I've already done all the legwork uh, from when I actually created the transfer system. So all I really need to do is add in item values, add a currency pop-up, add in sufficiency, insufficiency, add in sufficient currency pop-up and also alter the bulk transfer to use the vendor or player currency. All right, so pretty simple so far, but first things first, I need to get a coffee. Okay, so after a ton of UI changes, this is our new vendor system. So as you can see, we've obviously got our prices next to the items now. Um, and also if the price is red, obviously it means you can't afford it. Um, it'll also show red in your inventory if the vendor can't afford it, because obviously the vendor has caps, as you can see in the bottom right of his inventory. I also got this little pop-up which is pretty cool, uh, just makes you confirm just to remind you hey you're spending this many caps or you're about to sell this item type thing just so that the player is you know <laughs> aware of what he's doing, I kind of want to hold his hand a little bit. The quantity pop-up is a little bit more complex so when it opens it starts on the quantity that the other person can afford um, and obviously it goes red if you select too much that they can't afford. And I also added an insufficient funds pop up. So basically, if you're trying to buy something that you can't afford, or the vendor is trying to, or you're trying to sell them something that they can't afford. The only thing really left to do on the vendor system is obviously to take out the store all junk and take all actions, because um, that'll be quite expensive. <laughs> So moving on to the dialogue system. So the way it works is there's an initial dialogue, which is the first time you ever speak to a character. So when I talk to Sarah now, you can see she's actually introducing herself. Um, and we get a few options that we can pick from the tree here. Uh, they all work, so if I go into trade, you can see I've also removed the store all and take all junk buttons. Okay, so the actual tree itself works as you'd expect from a normal tree. So you can use uh, W and S to move up and down, uh, but of course you can also just use your mouse to hover over it. Um, space obviously goes through, but as you can see, it, it works as, as you'd expect. There is also a dialogue history that is kept, so you can see how the second item here is actually the opacity is off a little bit. Basically just means we followed that tree before. And also what you can see now is now that I've actually introduced myself to Sarah is I can just skip straight to the trade without going through to the dialogue. What you can see now is Sarah doesn't actually introduce herself anymore because we've spoken to her before. Um, so there's actually quite a lot of flexibility on what I can do with this uh, dialogue system. Um, but now I'm just gonna move on to the quests. So the quest is pretty simple. So the first thing I've done is I've changed the tab to quests instead of data. And if we go into this tab, you can see I have a very rough layout. So obviously we have all of our quests listed um, and obviously I toggle to show all completed or just show the ones that we're currently working on. Um, and then when you select one, obviously it shows the description and the tasks that we still have to do. Um, it'll also let us know if we're tracking, that's what the little eye symbol is. And from here, we're also able to abandon quests if we don't want it anymore. Okay, I've also now set up the quest triggers. So you can see if I go through this tree, I'll go back to where I can uh, basically accept Sarah's quest here. So as soon as you accept a quest, uh, you get the little UI saying that you've started a quest. In the top right, you can see that we have our uh, tracked quest. So obviously if you accept a quest and you're not tracking a quest, it'll automatically track the one you've just accepted. Um, and underneath that, you can see we have our task that needs to be done. So I still need to hook up the quest screen, um, but for now, the actual quest system does work. So if I look here and grab the stim pack, you can see it marks that task off and moves on to the next one, which is basically just to deliver the stim pack to Sarah. 
Um, so I'm just going to grab all these just because I like collecting stuff. Um, and then yeah, if I speak to Sarah, you can now see I have the dialogue to give her what she's looking for, which was the stim pack. Um, you'll also see that I can't go back and accept the quest again, because obviously uh, our dialogue history lets me know that we've already, you know, accepted it. So if I click it, it delivers the quest. Um, currently there isn't any UI to basically give you some feedback saying you've completed the quest, here's some XP, here's some money. Because uh, obviously we don't have an XP system yet, but stay tuned and it'll be in the next update. Which brings me to the next update, and I've actually done quite a lot already for the next update, and I can tell you now it is going to be a massive update. Uh, so what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be turning this project into more of my project, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start to pull it away from Fallout a little bit, because obviously if I want to release this as my own little project, um, I'm going to get sued. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to... This is this is kind of where you see the effort will start to start to bring the game to life. Um, I know some people have asked, you know, whether I'm taking this seriously or just doing it as a hobby on the side. Um, and I think the next few episodes will kind of show that I'm taking this seriously. And I honestly want to get it to release and see see where it goes from there. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, and definitely stay tuned for the next update. Thank you for watching.